Imagine if an athlete ran with minimal force and still his timing was like Usain Bolt. How would that feel? But the reality is Bolt didn't just apply more force. He used force efficiently. In Zagreb 2011, he applied about 4.2 times his body weight in ground reaction force, approximately 3930 newtons, and still didn't waste energy vertically. Vertical movement was only 4.9 cm. This efficiency is what sets him apart. Today, I'm going to tell you the real science of force. Everyone thinks more force equals more speed but the truth is applying force in the right direction and at the right timing is the real key to sprinting Usain Bolt's maximum speed was 12.3 meters per second but it didn't come from raw power alone he kept his ground contact time extremely short only 86 milliseconds and 63% of that phase was propulsion that means he was pushing against the ground most of the time not losing energy in breaking there are five secrets behind sprinters like Flojo and Bolt and if these are ignored no sprint can reach their true speed. In Berlin 2009, Bolt ran the full 100 meters in just 41 steps, while other sprinters averaged 45 steps. His average stride length was 2.44 meters, peaking at 2.86 meters, about 1.4 times his height. This is a rare combination because usually increasing stride length reduces frequency. Now the problem is every sprinter makes mistakes somewhere. Scientists found that even in Bolt's run, his strides weren't symmetric. Left leg steps were consistently longer but Bolt didn't let this asymmetry become a weakness he maintained top velocity for almost 50 meters while other sprinters usually manage only 30 meters this is why the second and fourth of these five secrets are the most critical the second secret is minimizing the braking phase Bolt limited it to just 37% which helped his speed increase rather than decrease and the fourth secret is technique optimization balancing stride length and frequency this is what truly separates Bolt from the rest of the world Now let's talk about that invisible force gravity imagine if gravity didn't exist a sprinter could never push against the ground newton's third law says the more force you apply downward the more reaction force will propel you forward bolt is the perfect example of in zagreb 2011 he applied 4.2 times his body weight in force on the ground and the reaction from gravity propelled him to a speed of 12.3 meters per second but this force is also a challenge in high jump gravity pulls you down in sprinting it presses on you with every step the difference is just how you hit the ground bolt kept his ground contact to only 0.086 seconds and used most of it for propulsion that's why gravity wasn't his enemy it became his secret weapon now let's talk about inertia the true partner of momentum newton's first law says that an object will stay in its state unless acted on by an external force in sprinting the same happens the body picks up inertia as soon as you leave the block and ideally you should carry that momentum all the way to the finish line but practically that doesn't happen because friction and fatigue slow you down this is where the difference lies between elite sprinters and the rest usain bolt is the perfect example according to berlin 2009 data acceleration phase 0 to 4.44 seconds 42.8 meters maximum velocity phase 4.44 to 8.63 seconds 51.28 meters deceleration phase only 0.47 seconds 5.56 meters this means bolt used inertia so efficiently that he reached top speed in just 50 meters and maintained a velocity of almost 12.3 meters per second for the next 50 meters while other sprinters could only maintain top speed for 30 meters in simple words inertia propels you forward but to harness it correct technique and timing are critical that's why drills are essential like practicing to maintain momentum for 10 to 15 meters right after leaving the block keeping hip alignment upright keeping stride gap compact and arms relax if these basics are correct inertia becomes your biggest advantage now comes the third force friction and this is the force that slows every sprinter down as soon as the foot touches the ground kinetic friction activates and gradually eats away at your speed that's why the shorter the ground contact time the better in zagreb 2011 bolt kept his contact time to just 86 milliseconds minimizing friction and maximizing propulsion this is where spikes and the track play a role spikes give you grip to prevent slipping and professional tracks like mondo have lower friction that's why bolt and other elite sprinters run faster on these surfaces on grass or uneven ground friction reduces speed the point is simple friction is every sprinter's enemy but the one who minimizes it unlock true speed now let's talk about the common mistakes that almost every sprinter make the biggest mistake is pushing the leg backward while the real work is to hit the ground forcefully downward a backward push wastes energy and naturally slows 
lose speed. The second mistake is leaning too early. Many sprinters lean too far forward right after the start. In elite sprinters, body lean is perfectly calculated. Neither too much nor too little. At high speed, wrong lean lets gravity and friction take over and disrupts balance. Watch Bolt and other elite sprinters in slow motion. Their feet always strike downward and body alignment is perfect. Beginners or gym sprinters miss this, which ruins their timing. In simple terms, wrong push and wrong lean are the biggest enemies of your speed. So now the question is how to control these three forces and optimize sprinting. The first rule, keep the body upright. When your torso is straight, gravity is evenly distributed and propels you more efficiently. Scientists analyzing Usain Bolt's 100 meter world record found that after the acceleration phase, he quickly brought his torso upright, which allowed him to maintain his average step length of 2.86 meters. Second, reposition the legs quickly. The faster you bring your legs back from the air to the ground, the shorter your ground contact time and friction won't be able to slow you down. Bolt took only 41 steps in the whole race, while other sprinters took around 45. This was possible because his leg repositioning was so fast that he covered more distance with each step. Third, stay relaxed. Many runners think more force means more tension. But the truth is, the more relaxed you are, the more efficiently your muscles work. Analysis of Bolt also showed that during the max velocity phase, 50 to 80 meters, he maintained a speed of about 12.3 meters per second for 5 steps and this was possible because his upper body and breathing rhythm were completely relaxed. And this is what makes the difference between a normal runner and a sprinter like Usain Bolt. Everyone has force, but optimizing it the right way is what truly unlocks speed.